Well, God bless you. Welcome to the Wonderful Words of Life radio program. We are in Luke chapter 12. We're continuing our study on the life of Christ and the things that Jesus said to us. Amen. Through these uh, four Gospels that were written by holy men of God as they were moved of the Holy Ghost. And so let's go ahead and pray and we'll get right into the Word of God. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your love and kindness and your tender mercies. Now, Lord, we just ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us today and we give you praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, in the last session, we talked about the warnings that Jesus gave and we talked about judgment. And it was a tough session because we don't want to we don't want to be taught about judgment because it's not something that we uh, we're thrilled about, but nece- but it's necessary because it is the word of God. You know, there is a judgment coming upon everyone on the face of the earth. But I want you to know, because you are a born again child of God. Amen. That you have passed from condemnation and you have been justified in his precious blood. And so your for your future, my future is very bright. Praise God. So we're going to be talking about that today. And we're in Luke chapter 12, verse 22. And we're going to be uh, in this section. We're going to be talking about the father's care. Notice what Jesus said. And he said unto his disciples, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment. Now, this is very familiar because uh, Matthew has this record in chapter 6 of his gospel. Verse 24, Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? That's uh, 18 inches. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take your thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will you, will he rather clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, Neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. In other words, when Jesus said this, they seek after. That is their prime motivation of life. Amen. Earthly possessions, earthly things. Amen. Bigger houses, better food, things like that. Now, if you're a member of a third world nation, amen, God has promised he's going to take care of you. Amen. He's going to do that if you'll trust him. Praise God. Uh, Continuing on, verse 30, and your father knows that you have need of these things. Amen. Now, Matthew said it this way. You know, your father hath know know that you had need of these things before you ask him. But then he goes ahead and says, we are to ask him. The Lord Jesus said that. Praise God. Uh, Verse 31, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I want to read that again. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Praise God. I tell you, we serve a loving father who is filled with mercy and grace and kindness towards those whose hearts are upright towards him. Praise God. His eyes run to and fro throughout the earth. He beholds not just beholding the evil and the good, but Lord, he, he beholds those who walk uprightly before him. Praise God. And now look at verse 33 and 34. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that fails not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Praise God. So Jesus is speaking to us and he's telling us to trust him in everything. 
I mean, just don't trust him in the big things. Trust him in the little things. God cares for us. The Father cares for us. Amen. If he has counted the hairs of our head, if he knows our down, down sitting and our uprising, praise God. If he watches over us while we're asleep at night, I'm telling you, God is very concerned about us. He is going to take care of us. He's going to watch over us. Amen. All we have to do is trust in his ability to put us over. Praise God. And then Jesus says this in verse 35, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And you yourselves liken to men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and shall make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Notice that serve them. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember Jesus in the upper room when he washed his disciples feet, he served them. Amen. And he told them, he says, now what I've done to you, you do to one another. Praise God. Amen. So we are not only to serve God, but we are to serve one another in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Verse 38 says, and he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also for the son of man comes at an hour when you think not. Praise God. And so we are to always be looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus. And we do that, amen, by always be working, laboring, and doing those things that are pleasing unto him. Praise God. So we have to always be ready to meet the Lord at his coming. Praise God. Amen. And just like Jesus described here, the friends of the bridegroom, they were already always ready, ready to hear the sound of him when he was ready to come and capture his bride and take her away. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so what I want to do is I want to take a few moments and I want to just share with you uh, what it is that you and I ha as believers, what you and I have to look forward to. I'm telling you, it's a glorious thing that uh, that you and I have entered into uh, through Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we're just not saved from sin, but we have been given an inheritance in Christ Jesus. We have been adopted into the family of God. And sometimes I don't think we, we ponder that enough. We are the adopted sons of God. Paul went so far to say that we are joint heirs with Christ, not just heir, but joint heir, equal heirs. Praise God. Being adopted into the family of God means that we now are able to receive everything. Amen. And be blessed right along with the only begotten. Praise God. What God has done for the Lord Jesus, he'll do for you. We just have to have faith and trust to believe that he will. If we call God our father, what we're saying is that, Father, I trust you. I trust you even unto death. Praise God. And if you allow the devil to push me to the very edge of the cliff and my my toes are sticking over the edge. Praise God. And I feel like I'm getting ready to fall over. I trust you explicitly. And I know that you will not allow me to fall. Praise God. You see, that kind of faith and trust uh, wins the battle every time. Defeats the devil every time. Praise God. Amen. So what do you and I have to look forward to? Well, the first thing we need to look forward to, or we will be uh, looking forward to, is the rapture of the church. Now, we know it's coming because the Bible tells us so. But we don't know when. But we do know this, that it's for everyone that has had the blood applied to their heart that has confessed Jesus Christ to save the Lord for the forgiveness of sins and a free pardon, praise God, and has received eternal life, the new birth. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Notice what Paul says. Behold, 
I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Praise God. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Praise God. We're coming to a place in Christ Jesus where death will not have any hold over us. The law of sin and death will have finally been broken and erased from the memory of the children of God. Hallelujah. And we will be ruled by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Praise God. And all this will take place in a moment. Just in a moment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, after that happens, then there's going to be the judgment of the people of God, not for worthiness now, but for our works. See, we're going to get a reward for everything we've done down here on this earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. Notice what Paul wrote to the first Corinth, to the Corinthian church in first Corinthians. Amen. Beginning uh, in chapter three, beginning in verse nine. Notice what he says, for we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building, his cultivated field, praise the Lord. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious jewels, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abides which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Notice that last verse, last part of the 15th verse. If any man's work shall be burned up, he shall suffer loss. In other words, he'll not get a reward, but he himself shall be saved. Amen. His reward is going to be heaven. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Yet so as by fire. So the fire of God is going to try our works. And it's just like gold tried in the fire. Amen. When gold is, is melted and all the, the sediment rises to the top and is skimmed off, that's exactly what's going to happen to you and I. The imperfections of our mortal life. Amen. Even though we put on immortality, uh, we're talking about rewards now. All of those things that we did that were not of God. We're not talking about gross sin and error and things like that. We're talking about just our imperfections, you know, in our attempt and our in our way of serving God. Hallelujah. Praise God. All that's going to be burned away, friends. All that's going to be left is the gold and the silver and the precious jewels, the rewards that we get to carry. Amen. Into uh, the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, what happens after the judgment for our works? Well, then we go into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Notice this in Revelation chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage supper of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that he should be that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So while the world is plunged into tribulation, you and I are going to be at a celebration feast, a seven year celebration feast where we're celebrating our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. But I want you to notice that that to her talking about the bride. Now we're talking about the church was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, white, uh, actually clean and white. Notice the perfection. No spots, no wrinkles, nothing, praise God. A pure, 
servant, a pure bride without any spot or wrinkle or any such thing. <laughs> Praise God. That's what the Lord Jesus is coming after. Amen. And it's all through his grace and through his mercy. He's going to prepare us. Praise God. We are going to be a fitting bride for our bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the fine linen, clean and white, that is the righteousness of saints. The righteousness of God through Christ. Amen. That's been imputed unto us. Glory to God. Amen. So think about that marriage supper. Think about that feasting. Think about that rejoicing. Praise God. Where we're sitting around with our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we get to enjoy. Amen. For seven years while the world is plunged into seven years of tribulation, you and I are going to be rejoicing. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what happens after that? Well, then the second coming. Notice what uh, John writes in Revelation chapter 19, beginning in verse 11. And I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse and he that sat upon him called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written, which no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And the enemies which were in heaven followed him. Notice that. And the armies and the armies, plural, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. <laughs> Praise God. Well, who are these armies? Well, that's the angels and that's the saints of God. Amen. We're going to be following our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, listen, we're the occupation troops. Amen. Jesus is going to slay all of his enemies with the sword that comes out of his mouth. Praise God. Amen. Read Isaiah chapter 63. He's the one that's coming out of Bozrah. He's the one whose vestures are dipped in blood. Praise God. Amen. He's our warrior Lord. He's our lion of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Praise God. He's the one that we're going to be following. Glory to God. What a glorious time. What a glorious time. I tell you what, our future is bright, brother and sister. It's bright. Praise God. Don't let these mo mo momentary afflictions bother us. Praise God. Just just keep our eyes upon Jesus. Keep our eyes upon the prize. Amen. Because he said he's coming back. We are to be ready for him to come. So let's just keep our eyes from heaven on heaven. Praise God. Amen. And for his soon return. Well, then what happens after the second coming? And Jesus sets up his kingdom in Jerusalem. Then there's going to be the judgment of the nations. This is found in Matthew chapter 25. Notice beginning in verse 31. And when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungry and fed thee or thirsty and gave you drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto me? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Think about that. Think about those nations, amen, that are going to resist the Antichrist. Amen. And they're going to be there to help God's servants, praise God, both Jews and, and those that are saved during the tribulation. Many of them are going to have their heads cut off. They're going to be beheaded. They're going to die for the, for, for the cause of Christ. But many of those are going to be saved, praise God, just like in the Second World War. All those faithful Europeans that hid Jews and kept them out of the grasp of the Nazis. Amen. Oh, they, they, are, they are and will be rewarded for their effort. But now those that collaborated with evil 
and turn the Jews in? Oh, I tell you what, they're going to have to. St and they have. They've stood before the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't think uh, things went very well with them. Amen. Unless on this earth they repented of their evil. Amen. That's the only way that an evil person is going to make it into heaven. He's got to repent. But now let's let's read on. Then shall he say, this is verse 41, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in, naked and you clothed me not, sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungry or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, Verily I say unto you, as much as you did it not to the one of these, the, these, the least of my brethren, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto eternal life. Amen. You remember the story about Saul of Tarsus on his way to Damascus and Jesus met him in the road? Remember what Jesus said? Why are you persecuting me? Well, Saul wasn't persecuting Jesus per se. He was persecuting Jesus' disciples. But when he raised his hand, when Saul raised his hand against God's disciples, the disciples of the Lord Jesus, he raised his hand against Jesus himself. Now you think about all these anti-Semites, all these that are killing Jews and harassing them and persecuting them and beating them up. You know, they're not beating that man of flesh and blood. What they're doing is they're coming out against the Lord Jesus Christ. And if they don't repent, if they don't make reconciliation, and if they don't renounce the things of darkness, guess who they have to face? They have to face this one we talked about. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. The one is coming on a great uh, white horse. Amen. The one who's going to judge the quick and the dead. Amen. Praise God. That's the one that they're going to have to stand against. And I just don't believe it's going to go well with them. Amen. But notice you're a child of God. You're a saint of the Holy One of God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You've been passed over judgment. Judgment's been passed over you. Now you're in the kingdom of God. Amen. The blessings are coming upon you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the judgment of the nations is going to be after the second coming. Well, then what happens after that? Well, then we enter into the millennial kingdom. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Notice this. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should receive, deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Think about the thousand year reign of Christ. Praise God. Well, you know, uh, and we'll not go there, but, you know, at the very end, of the thousand years, there's going to be a final rebellion. And that's found in Revelation chapter 20, 7 through 10. We'll not take the time to read it because we don't have. Uh, you can go there and read about the great, great last rebellion called Gog and Magog. Now, that is the second time that this a great battle was called Gog and Magog. There's also one listed in the Old Testament. I believe it's in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 39, I believe. And uh, it's going to be the final battle. But in the end, God's going to destroy all those that after a thousand years of peace, 
after a thousand years of the grace and the mercy of God and God healing the nations and God healing this earth and God restoring, praise God, life and health and well-being to the uh, to the population of the earth, there's still going to be people during that thousand years that are not saved that are going to finally rebel against God and they're going to be terminated. Amen. God is going to remove everything that is a curse from off the face of the earth. And so what happens after that? Well, then those that have gone to hell, those that have died without Christ, they're going to stand, have to stand at the white throne judgment. This is found in Revelation 20, beginning in verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the heaven and the earth fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Every person right now that is not born again, that is lost. If Jesus were come today, they would have to go into the tribulation period. And if they didn't endure throughout the seven year tribulation, they took the mark of the beast. They one day would be standing here at the white throne judgment. And notice what it says. Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Amen. They're in eternal death right now. And they don't realize it. But the second death, that's the finality of eternal death and they will never be relieved or redeemed from the second death but not you brother not you sister amen hallelujah you have accepted jesus christ as savior and lord you're free praise god you are a child of god and you'll never see this great great white throne judgment but this is what you will see amen and that's eternity that's the eternal state and we'll, we'll end right here. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice in heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and harmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars What's there a spirit of this run, running rampant through this, uh, you know, this country and through the world? It's the spirit of lie, the spirit of lying. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is uh, the second death. Now, let me go ahead and say this right now. You are not going to be touched by the second death if you have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Amen. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. There's nobody in the kingdom of God right now on this earth that is perfect. Amen. We're saved not by our works. We're saved by one thing only. That's the work of Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ that has cleansed us from all sin. Think about that. Praise God. Think about how wonderful that is. Think about how God in his infinite mercy and in his infinite wisdom has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Hallelujah. How's it come? It comes through the knowledge of God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So be joyful today. Be thankful today. Amen. You are on the winning side. Jesus Christ is coming again. And when he comes, he's going to capture his bride away. And I say praise God for that. Amen. 
Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die today, that you would be prepared for heaven? If you're not sure, then I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. I repent and ask you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I surrender my heart and life to you. By faith, I believe I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed this prayer and desire to know more about the gift of Christ that the Heavenly Father offers you, then email us at rbtc86 at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions promptly and provide you at your request with materials that will help you to grow in your faith in the Lord Jesus. This is Patsy Dunning. Thank you for listening to our broadcast today. And let me remind you to tune in to this station at the same time next week to hear more of the wonderful words of life. God bless you and remember what Jesus said. It is the Spirit who gives life.